Hey, brothers and sisters, this is yours truly once again, your beloved sister, Sister Vanessa, and I just want to say peace and blessings to all of you. I love you so much. I'm on a mission here. My mission is called No One Left Behind. I'm going to do all I can to reach out to my family, uh, my children, um, and my spiritual family. Uh, so basically, whoever listens to this message, it was meant for you. I would take it serious because I did not go through this for anything. So basically, um, I'm just going to open up with a scripture right quick here. Just one of my favorite scriptures, and it's Jude, the first chapter, Jude 1 and 24. And it says, Now unto him who was able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, the only true wise, most high, our Savior. Our Savior is the most high. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Hallelujah. Let it be so. Some Bible scriptures say, Amen. Okay. So anyways, we left off at uh, the battlefield is the mind. Okay. And we left off at submit to the most high. Okay. And so we're learning how darkness can be inside of us. Okay. So we're going to go to chapter two now, and this is going to be called the stronghold of the godly humility. Okay. I hear a lot of people on YouTube talking. They know a lot of scriptures. They can take you to a lot of verses and I'm not saying everybody. I'm just saying I do hear some people, but I also hear pride there. And one thing that the Messiah did, he did not have pride. Okay. And he walked in love and he walked in humility. And even though he was this man that the most high chose him, even though he was, uh, I would say, uh, he wasn't scary or anything like that. Like he was a bold, bold man of the most high, but he still had standards. So, okay. So anyways, we're going to go through this chapter and uh, we're going to feast on this and see what the spirit is saying to you as well as the spirit saying to me. Satan fears virtue. For those of you who do not know what virtue is, it is showing high moral standards. Okay, so the enemy knows you're when you're trying to straighten your life out, or when we're trying to straighten our lives out, what you he'll notice, okay, oh, she's not going to the club anymore. Oh, he's not sleeping around anymore. Oh, they're not smoking that marijuana no more. Oh, they're not drinking anymore. Okay, now you, you know you're dressing appropriately, you're trying to fix your hair, you're trying to look uh, virtuous and things like that. That is showing morals. You don't enjoy the things you used to enjoy. At least you thought you were enjoying it. You're not hanging out with the wrong people anymore. You are now uh, walking a different way. I see some women, maybe switching and walking and, you know, they have those little tight little stocking pants on, you know, because they want to seduce men or women nowadays, you know. And so basically here is what Satan fears. Satan fears virtue. He is terrified of humility. He hates it. He sees a humble person and it sends chills down his back. His hair stand up when Christians kneel down. For humility is surrender to the soul of the Most High. The devil trembles before the meek because it is the very areas where he once had access. There stands the Messiah and Hashatan is terrified of the Messiah, the anointing. Who truly are you fighting? Will you remember that the fall of man of the Garden of Eden, the judgment of the Most High against the devil, was that he should eat dust? Remember also that the Most High said of man, Thou art dust. Genesis 3, 14 through 19. The essence of our carnal nature, of all that is carnal in nature, is dust. We need to see the connection here. Hashitan feeds upon our earthly carnal nature of dust. Satan dines on what we withhold from the Most High. So if we're withholding uh, weaknesses like um, sometimes in a day I can get very angry at my enemies and, you know, I can say things that I shouldn't be saying. But I'll say, but then the Holy Spirit will say, you know, you shouldn't have said that. And then I'll say, you know, I shouldn't have said that. That was wrong. That's submitting and admitting what I said, okay? So the enemy can't come up against me later. But anyways, keep listening. Therefore, we need to recognize that the immediate source of many of our problems is not, I mean, sorry, of problems and oppressions is not demonic, but fleshly in nature. We must contend with the fact that one aspect of our lives, our flesh nature, will always be targeted by the devil. These fleshly areas supply Satan with a ready avenue of access to undermine our prayers and neutralize our walk with the Most High. And that's what these 
sorcerers, these witches, these people who are working evil against us. That's what they are trying to do. That's what they tried to do to me when I came here. It is only our exaggerated sense of self-righteousness that prevents us from looking honestly at ourselves. Like some people, they'll be talking on YouTube and they always talking about everything, but they're never saying anything about their downfalls or their faults. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just perfect, right? We know who is in us, but we must also know what is in us. If we will be successful in our war against the devil, therefore be specific when you submit yourself to the Most High. Do not rationalize your sins and failures. The sacrifice of Yeshua, the Messiah, is a perfect shelter of grace enabling all men to look honestly at their needs accordingly. Be honest with the Most High. He will not be horrified or shocked by your sins. You know, he already knows what we're doing anyway. He knew when we was going in them nightclubs, partying. He knew when we was fornicating. But the, the fact of the matter is, stop going back there. Stop fornicating. Stop going back, giving these people access to your life again or who or whatever it may be. He gives us grace, but he doesn't give us grace to keep going back over and over again. To sin against him, that's how we crucify. I talked about that before. We crucify the Son of Man afresh again. The Most High loves you without restraint, even when sin was rampant within you. Isn't that true? How he kept us when we look back, we'd be like, wow, the Most High could have destroyed me. How much more will he continue to love you as you seek his grace and to be free of iniquity? That's the key word. Seek his grace. You're in a movement of moving forward you're not staying where you are before we launch an aggressive warfare we must realize that many of our battles are merely the consequences of our own actions so some of us have to be careful I've said this before we can jump into spiritual warfare but we need to know if we're being allowed to do it and also is the father allowing us to do it because you can pay for it greatly I've done that before and I've almost lost my life I wasn't taught this but I learned you just don't jump into it like that, okay? To war effectively, you must separate what is from the flesh and what is of the devil. Allow me to give you an example. My wife and I once lived in an area where a beautiful red cardinal kept its nest. Cardinals are very territorial and will fight off intruding cardinals zealously. At that time, we owned a van which had large side mirrors and chrome bumpers. Occasionally, the cardinal would attack the bumpers or mirrors. Thinking his reflection was another bird. One day, as I watched the cardinal assail the mirror, I thought, what a foolish creature. His enemy is merely the reflection of himself. Immediately, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, also are many of my, your enemies the reflection of yourself. Okay? So sometimes we can just, for instance, I was allowing these people to make me angry, taking me and, and excuse me for the sirens i forgot to warn you you're going to hear sirens you're going to hear birds barking because whenever i'm trying to do something all of a sudden they come out of nowhere okay so anyways um that's you know i was allowing these people to make me angry i was acting mean i was really acting not who i am and and you know the lord said you know this is not you you got to be who you are who i created you to be don't allow these devilish agents of darkness to change who you are okay before we have any strategy for attacking satan we must make sure that the real enemy is not our own carnal nature we must ask ourselves are the things oppressing us toward the harvest of what we planted yesterday my husband so much so often says that be careful what you do today because you're going to pay for it later like he tells me honey i'm paying for some of my sins i i did in the past yes the Messiah did suffer, okay? But we have to suffer for our own sins. His was a different type of a suffering, okay? It was like a sacrificial thing. Agree with thine adversary. You will remember that Yeshua taught, agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. Least at any time the adversary delivered thee to the judge, and the judge delivered thee to the officer, and thou be cast into the prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Matthew 5, 25-26 Yeshia is speaking here of more than avoiding lawsuits. In fact, he speaks in such a way as to indicate 
that in regards to this particular adversary and this particular judge, we will all always lose our case and end up in prison. This parable explains the Most High's view of human righteousness in the narrative. The adversary is the devil and the judge is the Most High. Satan as our adversary stands as the accuser of the brethren, the judge of all. The truth Christ wants us to see is that when we approach the Most High on the basis of our own righteousness, the adversary, we will always have legal grounds. I mean, the adversary will always have legal grounds to cast us into prison for our righteousness is this filthy rag, Isaiah 64 and 6. Now, I'm going to just give a quick example. The other day, I was, uh, I got a ticket from the uh, uh, sheriff's department, okay? And yeah, I was speeding, but I wasn't speeding as quick as this lady said I was, okay? But I was, okay? But when she gave me the ticket, I wasn't going to argue with her. I just took it because I didn't have time to go to jail. I had to go to work. I had to do other things. You see what I'm saying? Some people do, but I didn't. When the Messiah says, agree with thine adversary quickly, he does not mean obey the devil. He is saying, when Satan accuses you of some sin or flaw, if the devil is minutely right, it is to your advantage to agree with him about your unrighteousness. If he accuses you of being impure or not loving or praying enough, he is right. The key is not to argue with the devil about your own righteousness, because before the Most High, your righteousness is unacceptable. No matter how much you defend or justify yourself, you know inwardly that often the accusations of the devil have morsels of truth in them. And that's true, even myself. I've been coming home and I haven't been praying before I go to sleep, you know what I'm saying? But I've been so tired, so drained, people following me, stalking me, all these different things. So what I did was I had these little uh, sticker things on my wall where you can write notes and stuff to yourself. So I just put on there, pray before you go to sleep, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I had to do that. So, um, and it says, our salvation is not based on what we do upon who the Messiah becomes to us. Christ himself the anointing christ himself is our righteousness we have been justified by faith our peace with the most high through the messiah's life that he lived and showed us the way romans 5 and 1 when satan comes against you he tries to deceive you by focusing your attention upon your own righteousness which is true the more we recognize that yeshia alone is our righteousness the less the adversary can assault us in the area of our failings. When the accuser comes seeking to condemn you for not having enough love, your response should be, that is true. I do not have enough love. But the son, the son, the Messiah of the, the creator um, died for, our, for my sins. He, he was the sacrifice for my sins. Even the sin of imperfect love. Step out of the shadow of satanic assault and stand in the brightness of your Father's love. Submit yourself to the Most High and ask for the love that Christ had and that He lived, that He had within inside of Himself when He lived, and forgiveness to place your weak and imperfect love. When Satan seeks to condemn you for impatience, again your response should be, "Yes, in my flesh I've been very impatient, but since I've been born again." The, the word of the Most High and His righteousness through His sacrifice are forgiven and cleansed. Turn to the Most High. Use the accusation as a reminder that you're not standing before the throne of judgment, but rather a throne of grace, which enables you to boldly draw near to the Most High for help. Hebrews 4 and 16. A vital key, therefore, to overcoming the devil is humility. To humble yourself is to refuse to defend your image. And, you know, sometimes, you know, people have come to me and said things to me in the past about my attitude or whatever, you know, and I, and sometimes I didn't agree with them. But I said, you know, Father, am I acting this way? Is this true? And sometimes he would say, no, that's just them, you know. And then sometimes he would say, yeah, this is you. This is what you're doing. So, you know. Sometimes, you know, people don't even want to accept what you're saying. And you, even if you are saying it in love, but you know what that is? That's our defense mechanism. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, but that's us doing that in our righteousness, in our own righteousness. Okay. And we don't always do it, but I know I have. I can't speak for you. So, but I'm speaking for myself. Um, to humble yourself is to refuse to defend your image. You are corrupt and full of sin in your old nature. Yet we have a new nature, which has been created in the likeness of the Messiah, Ephesians 4.24. So we can agree with our adversary about the condition of our flesh, but do not limit this principle of humbling yourself only when you are involved in spiritual warfare, okay? When we're in spiritual warfare, we're in dangerous ground. That's how these witches and these people have been doing evil to us. They've been getting over on us because see, that's where they're at in the spirit realm. 
doing evil. This precept is applicable in other situations as well. And they know. They know if you're doing wrong. You know that's why they're following us. Oh, she's talking about the name of uh, the Messiah. And she's talking about this. She's talking about that. But I saw her curse that man out. I saw her do this. I saw her do that. You see? Even one day I went off of these people in the store. But I had to go off on it because I was tired of them following me. And they almost ran me over with a basket. But I never once cursed them, called them out their name. Everything I spoke to them was the truth. But later on, I said, Father, maybe I shouldn't have yelled so loudly, but I was just tired, okay? And I and I asked the Father to forgive me for it, and I just moved it on. The strength of humility is that it builds a spiritual defense around your soul, prohibiting strife, competition, and many of life's irritations from stealing your peace. A wonderful place to practice this in your family relationship. As a husband, your wife may criticize you for being insensitive. A fleshy response could be could easily escalate the conversation to a conflict. The alternative is to simply humble yourself and agree with your wife or your husband. It don't have to always be the wife. You probably are insensitive. Then pray together and ask the father for more tender love. As a wife, perhaps your husband accuses you of not understanding the pressures he has at work. More than likely, he is right. You do not know the things he must face. Instead of responding with a counter charge, humble yourself and agree with him. Pray together, asking the Most High to give you an understanding heart. If he, we remain humble in heart, we will receive abundant grace from the Most High. Satan will be disarmed on many fronts. Remember, Satan fears virtue. He is terrified of humility. He hates it because humility is the surrender of the soul to the Most High. And the devil is terrified of Yeshua, the anointing that he had and walked in, the anointing of the Spirit of Christ in us. Okay, so you know, um, just the other day, uh, maybe a week ago, me and my husband had a defense of a, 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 a you know, an enemy, you know, was trying to tell him I was wrong. But just because I'm more sensitive to the spiritual realm than he is, doesn't mean I'm wrong. Just be that's the whole that's how the enemy is getting over on people because they're not seeing what I see, but maybe you don't see what I see, but you see something else that I don't see and I see what you don't see. But So it don't mean we're wrong. We're supposed to come together. I just want us to come together. Whatever few of us can come together, let us come together. Because let me tell you, the claps are thinning out. The amens are thinning out. It's thinning out. There's less and less people going the same way. Just like Fred, uh, Fred Genius Ahaya says in his many are not many are going that way not many are going that way so praise to the most high i just wanted to uh share with you those three chapters now the next thing i'm going to go into is you know humbling yourself to receive this message about the heart okay what this really is it is not ha it has nothing to do with love not a thing so i love you peace and blessings to you always shalom